Hello, I'm Bradley and welcome to my channel. So a slightly, it's slightly a difficult one to start with, I have to admit, to be quite honest with you this evening. Um, I wanted to capture uh, this on my channel as if um, if you have been following uh, my, my uh, I say, health experience, particularly this year has been very, very difficult, of course, for everybody with the COVID uh, pandemic. Um, but with myself in the background, I've been having a lot of problems in relation to an ongoing um, hernia journey, to be quite honest with you. So I've had two previous hernia uh, surgeries, which have been fails, um, and have left me with an awful lot of problems. And I've had two surgeries now. I'm just awaiting a third surgery um, in regards now to finally repair the third hernia. Um, or if it even is that, they're not 100% sure if it is that, but there's one thing for sure that the mesh is causing me a lot of problems, so that's going to come out. Um, but before that happens, because of the problems which I had right from the start with the first hernia repair, back in November 2017, I've done quite a few videos around, or clips rather, around this and how it's affected me in regards to a, a horrific, absolutely horrific uh, problem with my bladder. Now, as you would probably think, being a young man to talk about that is particularly difficult. Um, and it is. It really is. It's uh, It throws a whole host of emotions at me daily. Um, and sometimes it's literally wanting to grit your teeth and run away somewhere and literally just scream or literally just cry your eyes out because you wonder, is it going to change? Is it going to get worse? Is it going to get better? Now, earlier on the year before the lockdown started, I had um, lots of appointments back and forth trying all sorts of bladder medications to try and resolve my problem. Now, this all started right away as a prolific problem right when I had my first hernia repair um, back in November 2017. And then I had a, a bladder problem for a couple of months and it settled down didn't really go away, but settled down. Um, and then I had another surgery, but bearing in mind it never went away completely. So I had sort of um, a lot of good days, bad days, but more bad days, I think. And um, and then I had my second hernia surgery in July of 18, which again, I had the bladder problem horrendous. And I had that really bad for a long time. Both surgeries I was very slow to recover from. Um, these hernias were big and they gave me a lot of problems. A um, lot of nerve related problems, I believe. Um, and then, as I said, I was slow to recover and, and that was in late, mid to late July. And following that, um, I would say it wasn't until about September, October when I was, I was to the point where I could actually start to get on with things. I could start to get on with life. Um, and then, of course, I started to have problems in early 2019 um, and I was back and forth with lots of specialists. And again, with the bladder problem, I've seen so many urologists um, trying to help me manage the problem, different medications, which at times have made me very unwell. Um, and one did work for a while and then and then didn't really help after um, some time of taking the medication. So then it was told that in late 2019, um, that I, I had some steroid injections and things midway through 2019 and then 2019 towards the end, I was told I had a third hernia. And then early into this year, um, since March of last year, the bladder problem has been horrific. So up until this day, um, so when you think that's nearly, what's that? That's nearly 18 months, it's 18 months. Um, of that constant bladder problem. When I say constant, I literally mean only the odd good day here and there. Um, now let's talk a little bit about that. So what do you mean as a prolific bladder problem, you might think? Um, so I, uh, myself growing up, never had any problems. Just to get that out there, never had any problems at all with um, growing up, um, never had any health problems in, in that sort of area, had, had nothing. Um, but yet having the hernia surgeries, which I've never been able to understand and the medical professionals have really struggled, but now it's only just coming to light that the mesh could quite possibly be up against my bladder. Um, that I had literally the constant urge of always needing to pass urine. That would never go. Even going to the bathroom, that would never go. And very often it still doesn't go. Um, so always having to be careful, needing to be near facilities, needing to be near a bathroom all the time. Um, 
always having that horrible sort of heavy sensation of being like you're absolutely bursting um, and literally once you've been in the bathroom five minutes later needing to go again five minutes later needing to go again and do you think that's an exaggeration it's really not it's not uncommon for me in just in a morning to have been in the bathroom eight or ten times and that's been something which I manage my life around um, if I go anywhere the people who I go with they know that I can't really go on a long car journey at all without doing several stops. If I go anywhere, I need to use a bathroom straight away. Then if, say for example, if I'm looking around somewhere, and bearing in mind I've got a hernia problem now with the mesh, which is causing me a lot of problems to get around. It's giving me, unfortunately, quite a bad limp with my leg, and I find it quite difficult to sit up straight, to stand up straight. Um, so it's giving me a whole host of problems. But of course, if I'm going anywhere, I need to use a bathroom straight away. Then about half an hour to an hour later I need to go again and it's just constantly like that it really is um, you may think do I have a burning sensation have I ever had a water infection no nothing like that at all completely different when it all started I thought that's exactly what it was but it was very quick uh, that that wasn't the problem and it wasn't going to be so easy to rectify so at the start of this year I had something what is known as a urodynamics test and it's not horrific but it's certainly not pleasant as you can well imagine as in a tube up into your bladder um, and we're measuring the pressure measuring the muscles in how your bladder fills and how your bladder empties um, with two ladies in the room you can well imagine how embarrassing that was um, but it was then told to me that my bladder muscles were working which was fantastic but they weren't working in the right sequence and then shortly after that um, i had what's known as a flexible cystoscopy which again is uncomfortable sometimes i was going to say something there but i'm not going to just in case somebody's awaiting one of those um, but of course everybody's different but it is uncomfortable it is painful um, especially if you've got the problems like what I've described for example you think that you're just going to need to burst to the bathroom you need to just going to rush to the bathroom or you feel as though you're absolutely bursting and then you can imagine somebody putting a camera up through into your bladder through your privates as a man is pretty insane and believe you me it is eye-wateringly uncomfortable as a man to go through that and then from that we went into lockdown so for a lot of months now I've been putting up with a lot of problems with the bathroom which have gradually got worse um, fortunately being working from home um, has been a blessing for me and I know it's odd to describe through the times what we've all been through but when you have a prolific bladder problem like mine and you live in the bathroom most of the time um, it helps um, the plan was back in March to go ahead and have um, some biopsies done of my bladder um, do you have a fix, uh, is it fixed rigid cystoscopy, which is not a flexible one rigid, so as in a long tube, you can, you can imagine with a camera, um, into your bladder. Yep, that way you can well imagine how they get there in a man's bladder, so that, um, and hydrodistension, which is, it's thought that it would might help me that if I had a larger capacity in my bladder, because it was thought that I had a very small capacity, um, so um, the date has finally come for me to have the surgery. So that has come through a couple of days ago, a call. And um, I've been giving calls to the consultant all the way through the pandemic about how can somebody help me? There's been many a times where I have needed help and I really thought that I was never ever gonna get through this. And next week I am due to have the operation. So the hydrodistension, which is making the bladder bigger, I believe, as a capacity, and um, which I believe is done through fluid, inducing fluid into the bladder and stretching under a general anaesthetic, and biopsies and investigations like an exploratory. Um, and to really see, I believe, if the hernia mesh is causing me the problems with my bladder. Um, so today, actually, I've had all my pre-assessments at the local hospital my weight my height all the tests and things what come with that and for the anaesthetic i have an acid problem uh, so gastric reflux is huge for me um so there's some changes there and of course i have a hearing imbalance condition so that makes it even bigger and believe it or not i don't do particularly well under anaesthetic um and often it can make me quite sick and with vomiting and things so i'm really not looking forward to that but i am looking forward to one day being able to walk down the street without a limp with my groin at the moment, being able to stand up straight, so I haven't got those problems in my groin, but not needing the bathroom. 
every sort of half an hour, every hour. Um, so huge things are happening. Huge things are happening. And I'm nervous. I have to admit I am nervous. But what I've been trying to do is I'm very busy with work. So pushing on with work. I work in finance um, in, a, in accountancy. So pushing on with that. Um, everything else in the background. We had an amazing, amazing time of my mum's birthday recently, which has just been absolutely incredible. She's the most incredible lady ever and so, so supportive. And my dad is throughout all of this as well. I've been very blessed to have incredible parents to support me throughout all of this and all of my family. Um, but it's a very individual thing when you have something so private as that, which anybody who's watching this will know, it's really, really difficult, really difficult. Um, and it's something which after so much time has really kind of worn me down into a place where you have to smile and you have to keep forcing a smile and you have to sometimes be, dare I say, a little bit fake and wear a smile because I don't want everybody to know that actually inside everything's not going OK. Sometimes it is. Sometimes that type of problem which I've got at the moment can really wear you down and it feels like that you're in a box and you're isolated. Mm. Um, but hopefully from next week, things will change. I'm told it's painful. I'm told I will have to have a catheter, I'm told. Um, I'm hoping I'm not having to. So ugh, you can imagine, can't you? And I may have to stay in the hospital. And I think about six, eight, maybe 10 weeks after that, I'm going to have the mesh removal surgery. So I actually received a call today than the top specialist, which I've now been the third time referred on to somebody new, to have that last final chat and then hopefully to then talk to me about what's going to be happening surgically um, to hopefully put my life back on the right road. So that's just an update. It's very difficult to follow. Um, but as I say with all of my clips, when it's a little bit more sensitive like this, I came to YouTube as something which I could start my channel. And as I said, I called it on my channel, um, the ups and downs of the bumpy road of life. And that's exactly what I do very often. If I don't wish to talk to somebody, if I don't wish to sort of get something off my chest, what I like to do is I like to talk to my channel. And what I would say is throughout all of my clips recently, over the last couple of months, I have had so many incredible, incredible comments. And for that, I really do thank you. Um, it it does really, really, uh, well, it's just heart touching. It really, really is. So if you are watching and you've got to this point and you're hearing me say this, thank you very much indeed, because it really, really helps. And even a week I put aside for the comments on my channel and it's really heartwarming and it's just amazing. So thank you for that. And certainly when I'm feeling quite low with a problem like what I've been describing on this clip, um, and I don't do it all the time because I cannot, you have to sort of lift yourself out of this because my saying to myself is that there is always somebody worse off, Bradley. Put that smile on. Nobody's promised a tomorrow, so I don't want to be wasting my time over this problem. I don't really want to even give it the credit, to be quite honest with you, that to ruin my life. It makes things difficult. Damn, does it make things difficult. But um, yeah, um, don't give up on things easily. I come from a family made of tough stuff, and I, I hope to think that I'm getting there as well. OK, thanks very much indeed for watching my clip. It means the world to me. This is a really sensitive issue and something which um, really wears me down at times. So thanks very much indeed. And until next time, we will see you then. Bye bye now.